Welcome back. In part one we considered what it actually is that we need to code in order to achieve unity of behaviour across backtesting and live trading. If you haven't seen that part yet then I'd highly recommend that you watch it because you need to have that knowledge in order to understand why the code is written in the way that it is. If you want a quick link to it then you'll find it in the description right below. So firstly, we're going to look at the code to provide unity of behaviour for a single symbol, EA. Now, those of you that follow me on YouTube will know that in a previous episode, I showed you how to code a multi-symbol EA. So in other words, an EA that can trade multiple symbols from the same EA instance, and also allow you to backtest and optimise multiple symbols at the same time, and obtain a single set of results. So later in this episode, after we've looked at how to control bar opening for a single symbol EA, I'll also show you how to code it for a multi-symbol version as well. But let's now dive into the code for the single symbol version. Okay, so the first thing to say is that all of this code is available on GitHub, and there's a link to the location of that in the description of the video. So the first thing worthy of note is this enumerated value that you can see here for the bar processing method. So the three options that you can select when you start the EA is to process all delivered ticks, process only those ticks from a new M1 bar. And so this is the option you would use when you were using the back tester and the M1 OHLC setting. And the third option is to process ticks from a new trade timeframe bar. So in the example we used before, this was the M15 chart. So this would have to match the values in the strategy tester when using open prices with a particular time frame. And just below here, you can see the input string that gets set with that particular value. You'll also note that I specifically set the trade time frame that I'm going to use within my EA. And this is what I use in all of the indicator buffers that I set up. So I don't rely on the period function. I prefer to be able to place my EAs on any time frame of chart and to use this value here to determine the time frame. Next, you'll notice four global variables, and these are all used to control bar opening. So tick received count gives us the number of ticks that have actually been delivered to the EA, either from a live trading context or from the strategy tester. And ticks processed count gives us the number of those ticks that we have actually taken action on and performed our calculations based on. The time last tick processed variable is used to store the value of the bar of the last tick that we processed so that we know when we have to process the next tick. And then the bar to use for processing variable is used to store whether we're going to use bar zero or bar one. And in order to understand that, you need to watch part one of this episode. But this value gets set when the EA is initiated and in the on init function, you can see that depending on the bar processing method that we're using, the bar to use for processing gets set appropriately. So as I said in episode one, if I am using the open prices model and we're just processing ticks from a new bar in the trade time frame, then I prefer to use bar one. Other than that, either when using the M10HLC or every tick, then I prefer to use bar zero, as you can see here. And then finally in on init, I write some diagnostic information out to the screen, which we will have a look in a moment when we run this EA. And this information is also written out from the on tick function at appropriate times. So if we now turn our attention to the on tick function, as you'll know, this is instantiated every time a tick is delivered to the EA. Now, the thing you have to get your head around here is that although a tick is delivered, we don't necessarily have to process that tick. And of course, that's what the bar controlling code is all about. So purely for diagnostic purposes, 
we increment the ticks received count so that we can monitor how many ticks have been received by the EA. And then depending on the bar processing method that we've chosen to run the EA under, this will determine if we actually process it. So as you can see here at the top, if we've selected the process all delivered ticks, then clearly we will process every iteration. So we set process this iteration to true. If, however, I'm only processing ticks from each new M1 bar, so this is what I use when I'm using the M1 OHLC model in the back tester. And here we simply use this conditional statement that says if the current value of the last tick processed is the same as the start time for the current M1 bar, then we know that we've already processed the open tick for this particular M1 period. However, if it's different to the M1 bar that we've processed, then we know that a new M1 bar has arrived. So we simply set process this iteration to true, but then also update the value that the last tick was processed. And then in a very similar way, if we're only processing ticks from a new bar in the trading time frame, so the example we used earlier was the M15 chart, we now compare the time that the last tick was processed to the start time of the current bar in that time frame. If the values are equal, we know we've already processed the open tick from that bar, in which case we don't need to process this tick. If, however, they are not equal, then we know we've got a new bar in this time frame. We set process this iteration to true, and then we update time last tick processed to be the start time of bar zero in that trade time frame. And so this is the core element of the bar controlling code, which determines whether or not we process the tick that's just been delivered and is currently being actioned by on tick. And so when we get to the next part of the code, process this iteration is either set to false, in which case we don't need to process it, or true, which means that we do need to process it. So first of all, if it is true, we increment the tick processed count so that we can see that for diagnostic purposes. And then you would run your code to do whatever you needed to do. So process your trade closures, process your trade opens, and so on. And then also for diagnostic purposes, we just put an alert to the screen to say that we have processed this tick. Now, clearly you wouldn't do this in a production EA. This is just for the purposes of this tutorial. And then finally, just like we did in on init, we output the diagnostic information to the screen, which we'll look at in a moment. Now, obviously you will have your own proprietary code in the trade closures and trade opens functions but I've just included them here to illustrate how I use the I bar to use for processing variable. So for whichever indicators you're using in your EA, you'll need to copy those to local buffers and use the copy buffer function there to copy the indicator buffer into that local buffer. It's then also my preference to use array set as series to ensure that in the local buffer, the bar zero represents the current bar, bar one represents the previous bar and so on. And so then below you can see that I'm setting this variable here for the current indicator value to be the local buffer using I bar to use for processing. And as we've already seen, if we're either processing every tick or the M1 OHLC model, then here we will use bar zero. Otherwise, if I'm processing using open prices, then this will be set to a value of one. And then clearly for the previous indicator value, we just add one to that value. The only other function I've got in this particular tutorial is the output status to screen, which you can see here, but we'll have a look at what this does when we show it in MT5 now. Okay, so if we now run this on a chart, so I'll set the trading platform to 15 minutes here. And first of all, we'll look at the processing of all ticks. So if you look here at the top, you can see the number of ticks received count and the number of ticks processed count. 
And because we're processing every single one of those ticks, these numbers are increasing together. So rather than changing the value of the bar processing method on the EA while it's running, we'll just stop it running so that all of the counters get reset. So this time we're going to choose the option to process all ticks from a new M1 bar. So initially when we run it, we get the alert window to say that a tick has been processed and also the number of ticks processed has been incremented to one. But you can see now that the ticks received is increasing, whereas the ticks processed isn't. And if we just take a quick look at the time, we can see that we should be processing another one just about now. There it goes. So as soon as that new tick arrived in that new M1 bar, we've now got two ticks that have been processed. And as each new M1 bar is started, this number would increase. So as you can see, the vast majority of the ticks we're now ignoring. Okay, so the final option that we're going to look at is processing ticks from a new bar in the trade time frame. So because we're setting this to the 15 minute time frame, the EA will now only process one tick per 15 minute period. So when we start, we get the tick processed, but this will now not increment until we get to 12.30. So I'm gonna skip ahead now and we'll see that tick coming in in a moment. So you can see now that we're just approaching half past 12 and the EA has received just over 800 ticks, but still only one of those ticks has been processed. But as we see the new M15 bar appear, you'll see that the second tick has now been processed and we get our alert. So what we've done here, if you think about it in a live trading context, is we've exactly replicated what happens when using the strategy tester with the open prices model. So we're processing exactly the same ticks that would have been processed in the back tester using that model. And that, of course, is exactly what we want. We want the conditions in live trading to be the same as in backtesting because then it means that the results we see are going to be truly indicative of the results that we see in our live trading results. Okay, so now we've covered how to control bar opening for a single symbol EA, we now need to move on to the code for the equivalent functionality, but for a multi-symbol EA. So click top right now to go to the next part.